These mutations, originating in Africa, appear on every Y chromosome in every man in the world today. These are the universal mutations we've been looking for. We followed the DNA trail all the way to the bottom of the tree. Every branch leads to one man, one Y chromosome. There must have been one man who gave rise to all men alive today. He is the ultimate super ancestor. He is Scientific Adam. One of his descendants was M168. He was the forefather of the ancient Middle Eastern ancestor of Thomas Jefferson. He gave rise to Genghis Khan's Y chromosome. In fact, all the Y chromosomes in the world trace back to this one African man. He is Scientific Adam. Wells believes the pattern of African Y chromosomes puts his birthplace somewhere in the Great Rift Valley region of East Africa, perhaps Tanzania or Ethiopia. He thinks this is Scientific Adam's homeland, his Garden of Eden. Genetics can date the ancient Y chromosome mutations to calculate the age of Scientific Adam. Wells believes he was born around 60,000 years ago. It sounds ancient, but it means our search for a common ancestor has not led us all the way back to a time of ape men, or even to primitive beings like Homo erectus. Compared to the billions of years of human evolution, we found Adam in the recent past. The critical discoveries of where and when Adam lived prove he could not have looked like this. For the first time, it's possible to paint a new portrait of Adam based on science. Facial reconstructions have shown what other ancient humans might have looked like. We have images of earlier beings like Homo erectus and the ancient prehuman known as Lucy. These faces are all based on fossil skulls, but there are no intact skulls from Adam's time. There is a man who can give a face to Adam, even without his skull. Frank Bender calls himself the recomposer of the decomposed. He's a forensic artist, a specialist at bringing the dead to life. Bender works regularly for police departments around the world, giving faces to human remains, even when the skulls are almost missing. Adam's skull is missing, but Bender will base his reconstruction on the closest skull he can find, and that brings him to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Gary Sawyer is an expert on reconstructing prehistoric faces. He believes this skull, found at a site called Kafsa, is a good basis for Adam. Because he combines modern features with still some uh, archaic features in a lower forehead or frontal and good size brow ridges. The Kafsa skull is about 100,000 years old. Adam's skull would be much more modern. Bender will have to estimate what thousands of years of evolution would have done to Kavza man's appearance. First, he uses his forensic skills to figure out what Kavza man looked like. Wow, that came out. Must blew perfect. Bender can determine his features from the structure of his skull. The shape of the cheekbones. The line of the jaw the width of the nose, the size of the chin.
Kavza man is a hundred thousand years old. To construct a face for Adam, Bender has to update this portrait by 40,000 years. As humans evolved, the shape of our skulls changed, brow ridges shrank, the forehead became more vertical, the chin more prominent. Adam should be almost halfway between this ancient man and humans like us. Bender needs to find that midpoint. He needs a modern face to compare to the ancient skull. But not just any face. He wants someone whose lineage traces most directly back to Adam. Wells knows where to look. In East Africa is a little known tribe called the Hadzabe. Spencer, Dano. Their DNA links them almost straight back to Adam. They give us a glimpse into his world. And they point to what Adam could have looked like. Scientific Adam should be a midpoint between the ancient Kafsa face and one of these faces. Like the Hadza chief Julius Hendaya Ne Ume. But how do you blend the two? To do this accurately, Bender turns to technology developed for security applications like anti-terrorism. Facial recognition software measures the incremental differences that make a face unique. Like the distance between the eyes, the width of the nose. Engineers pick out over 200 features that together define the shape of the Kavza face, turning it into a mathematical model. They do the same with the Hadzabe chief. The computer compares the two sets of data, faces separated by a hundred thousand years, and generates the midpoint, a blueprint of Adam. A printer converts the computer model into a 3D head. Layer by paper thin layer, the head emerges. Bender will use this as a template to finally give Adam a face. But the Hadzabe can do more than show what scientific Adam might have looked like. They can give us a window into his world. And they reveal clues to what made Adam and his descendants so exceptional. They could give rise to all men on Earth. <laughs> Mutations on the Y chromosome show that scientific Adam was born around 60,000 years ago. An extraordinary time in human history, a time of crisis. Scientists believe humans were on the brink of extinction. The entire population may have fallen to no more than a couple of thousand. But from this moment of peril, humans begin an astonishing rise. For the first time, art appears. Tools become much more advanced. This new energy and innovation will enable our species to conquer the planet. Something critical had changed in human nature. What triggered it is a puzzle. Yet it seems to come just after Adam. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. Maybe it is. But it's also possible that Adam was the one who set in motion these changes. How could one man change his whole species? Wells has a theory. It's cutting edge and highly controversial. He believes Adam may have been the first man with the ability to think as we do. The first truly modern man. If Wells had his way, he'd go back in time to find out. <laughs> 